McDonald's Garage. Today we're talking about MV Augusta, one of the greatest names in motorcycling. This is my 1976 MV Augusta. I bought this over 40 years ago. I remember it was $13,500 and people said, you are out of your mind. Triumphs were like $3,500 at the time. But this was, I think it's safe to say, the Ferrari of motorcycles. It's 750cc sand cast engine. These Monty pipes, those are aftermarket pipes, but they were sanctioned, I think, by the factory. Monty was, it's M-A-G-N-I. Uh, he worked closely with MV Augusta and helped turn them into racing bikes. This is a shaft-driven bike. Count Augusta, who made helicopters and all kinds of things, he won, well, what does it say, 37 world championships with his motorcycle. But he liked to race them, not him personally, the factory. He didn't like privateers. So when he decided to build a road bike, he put kind of a heavy shaft drive on it, which doesn't affect me because I'm not a racer, but Mahi would do a chain conversion for those. The race bike from that period looked something actually exactly like this. And if you did not have a trained eye, you would think, oh wow, this is a beautiful late 60s, early 70s MV Augusta. It is not, it is based on a brand new bike, a Butali, designed by a friend of mine, uh, Stuart Parr. He is a designer and an artist and just one of these all around kind of guys. Let's bring him in. Stuart, come on in. Beautiful job. When I saw this, I, it, my jaw really dropped. To me, Thank you. It's one, it was always one of the most beautiful bikes because the seat matched the color and the blue and the white. And I always thought that these from the period, to me the prettiest was I think the 69 or the 70 version. It looked like this. Mine's a little bit later. Yeah. But I always thought it was the prettiest tank and those hand bent pipes and the whole deal. And what you've done is taken basically a brand new motorcycle and designed it the way you wanted it to be. Is that correct? Yeah, and uh, basically make it a tribute bike. Right. The new bikes, a lot of them are made with a lot of plastic parts and right. you know, we made this, uh, you know, all of this is made out of metal, hand hammered. And I just wanted more of that luxurious feel. Right, hand, yeah. Handmade. Right. And uh, ironically, the 800 Brutale stock, which has a lot of plastic all over it, this is 40 pounds lighter. Wow. I have one of those as well that, I mean, it's the best sounding motorcycle ever, yeah. bar none. Also the, you know, that shaft, what you were saying, the shaft drive, you know, they probably would have prospered much more as a company if they allowed privateers out there because they would have had a lot more people invested. Right. But it, that adds 40 pounds to the bike. Right. Just that. Well, the original, I'm sure you remember the original road bike they made was one of the ugliest bikes with the dual headlights, remember? Yeah. And it was 600 cc's. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and it was really an unattractive. It's almost like he did it deliberately. Go, you want the, a bike? I make a bike, but it's not the bike uh, you're going to want. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, you know, when you own a company, you can do whatever you want. Right. And as opposed to having a board of directors, or whoever, he didn't want anyone but him racing his bikes. And he made sure that nobody could turn that big, 600 cc touring bike into a racer and then right. later on they got a little looser when he built this it's a 750 and you could have bought three or four honda 750s for the price of this thing when you hear it uh, it's it really is music and it's just a wonderful 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 bike to ride but let's get back to this one now uh, uh, you have the mahi name on here did he have anything to do with it so the story of this is, is you know, I have a collection of vintage uh, MV Agustas and Italian bikes. I also buy and sell some, but I have a collection which, you know, a bunch of them are at the Peterson Museum right now right. on okay. display. I formed a relationship through some friends of the owner of uh, MV Agusta, Giovanni Castiglione. And, you know, I'd gotten a lot of press about some of the exhibitions I had. I had 70,000 people and Wall Street Journal articles, and he, I guess, for lack of a better word, wanted me to be an ambassador. Right, right. Now, for I the had, brand. Yeah. yeah, I had no new bikes. I mean, I was driving in New York City on my vintage uh, MV Augustas. So he gave me two 800 Brutales, and I was obviously very honored and grateful, but I asked him if I could redesign them, and he agreed. So I took the bikes, and I went to Magni in Milan, and. You know, Magni, Arturo Magni was the, you know, he was the engineer. He's the one that found Agostini as a boy and brought oh, him right? as on a racer. He's responsible for Agostini. Wow. Magni 
engineered and ran the race team at MD Augusta for almost 30 years. So when they went, started going bankrupt around 76, he went off on his own. I mean, there was nowhere to stay. And then right. he started doing chain drive conversions and then started making them with BMW engines. He made motorcycles. So I wanted to take it to him because he had engineered the first one. I mean, the original bike. Right. And they'd built a lot of bikes. I didn't want to make it in a garage. Right. Um, they actually engineer. The frame's not going to break. It's a real motorcycle manufacturer. Right. So, and they just loved the idea of the project. He passed away during the project, but his son Giovanni, who's been running it for, I don't know, 40 years, 35 years, um, was just great to work with. You know, he loved the project. Now, I thought the G was silent. It's Magni, you say? Magni. Magni, okay. But when you see it from this angle, oh. the way this flows into here, boy, it's just beautifully done. And the red seat, nobody was doing a red seat. And if you said I'm going to put a red seat in my most, get out, you know. But for some reason, it works here. And there's so many nice little touches, like these are your turn signals here. Mm -hmm. And they're so salt, small and so delicate, you won't notice them unless you're making a turn and the light comes out, which is exactly what you want. It's not some big giant thing yeah. hanging off here, you know. So this engine is 800 cc, putting out what, about 110 horsepower? Yeah, 110 wow, horsepower. Wow, that's impressive, okay. Six speed or five? Six. Six speed, okay. One of the issues we went through uh, was, you know, a lot of the new, uh, I wanted Barani type rims. I wanted them thin, I wanted them elegant. Right. And a lot of the rims today are very big, right. they're sort of much stronger, thicker. So, you know, like what happens typically in Italy is, you know, they say we can't get it, and this is no problem, I, but this is a problem. Right. And then you come back the next day and they solve the problem. Right. So, and we, you know, we needed a, a rim that wasn't going to cave in with 110 horsepower. Right, right. So, and, you know, it's got a, obviously a wider rear tire yeah. than any original Baranis that you'd find on years of Baranis. Plus, I remember, wasn't it, was it, was it Campanola, the big brake in the front? Who did the big brake in the front? They had Brembo, they had, oh, Fontana? Fontana. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, that the was that big drum brake. Four shoe. Break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four shoe. Yeah. Four leading, leading shoe. Four leading front. Four yeah. leading shoe. Yeah, yeah, that way. I remember that was one of the most beautiful brakes. <sighs> They're and, beautiful. I would actually mind not stomping as fast if I had that, you know. Well, it I didn't work as well as a disc, obviously. No. I have a 70, I think 71. Uh, frame number 16 of the 750 Sport that was ordered. The guy was a friend of Count Augusta's and it has a Fontana front brake. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Now the engine, I remember mine is a sand cast engine. Right. And this is painted gray with sort of a matte finish to mimic this, I think yeah. the sand cast look. Did you do that or is that no, stock? No, that's, that's stock. That's the way it came, okay. Yeah, these sand cast engines are so beautiful. You brought up the 600 MV. Mm -hmm. I have the only yellow one made. So you have the ugliest motorcycle in the yeah. worst color. Well, that's it, you have to see it. It's it's kind of kind of so bad it's good. It's so strange. I, I wanted one for the longest time. It had that big giant dual headlight, almost like a Munch Mammoth. It's actually a Corella, like that you'd find on a Maserati. Right, right, yeah. I mean, and it's a car headlight. Yeah, they deliberately made the bike so unattractive. Why are you doing this? I mean, I, you know, it's just so funny how some people are. They told me he had to make a street bike. I'm going to make it ugly. Because yeah. like, I didn't think he was capable of making an unattractive motorcycle. But that was, that was unbelievable. It's such an oddball. Yeah. Are these all the... Oh, ones? sorry. One other thing. What's that? It's got like a bicycle front brake. Oh, yeah. It does have a little... It has a mechanical brake. I mean, literally... Oh, it's a disc. With the mechanical? Yeah, it's a, just like a bicycle brake. Like yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Like it won't stop anything. Yeah, it's just, it's like they wanted you to get killed. <laughs> to buy it. To teach you a lesson, yeah. not to buy that bike. Let me ask you about the exhaust pipes. They appear to be hand bent specifically for this bike. Is that correct? Yeah, they're Magni made pipes made in the, uh, made in their facility. Boy, it's a good looking motorcycle. Are you going to build a bunch of these or is this the only one? Yeah, we're going to do uh, an addition of 50 of them. Oh, okay. So we're just, uh, you know, also, you know, we're trying a set of clip-ons that are a little bit... Higher up? Yeah. Yeah, because to me, I'm at that age where... Yeah. 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 This should, you know, 
come with an Advil and maybe, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, not for L4, L5, S1 pro disc problems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, we ordered those from Pro Italia here. And it appears to be a hand bent shifter or brake. Uh, that's not stock, is that stock? No, and Magni had always done those on the race bikes, right. drilled a lot of the parts out to save weight. Okay, battery is on this side or this side? Um, oh, I guess it's on both sides. Right in the middle, yeah, right it can come either side. And amazing how tight this engine fits in this frame. And you could barely get a McDonald McDonald's single patty hamburger through there. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's so it's, it's, it's big, yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing, yeah. It's got great brakes. Um, and what's wonderful also, you know, working in Italy is that, you know, to get these hand hammered and made. That's you know, right. Just, this looks like a fender off a Norton or a BSA or something from the period, but it's not. It's made specifically because this front tire is much wider than anything they had back in the day. Yeah, it's yeah. made a couple miles away. Somebody just does it, brings it back, and it's... Hey, you know, yeah. one of those yeah. Yeah. Make, make a defender for the money. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, the speed in which you can get people to work in Italy is quite... Uh, also, just the ability to have 50 guys with right. 150 miles that can all do that. Right, right. And this was, you know, we had, we, we started by, you know, making this out of foam. And for me, this is just one of the most beautiful tanks. It really is. This rivals any... the Bruff Superior to me as the best looking tank. You know, those two are my favorites. And of course, this, yeah, you had these printed, these decals, yeah. correct? Yeah, I mean, look at that. 37 world champions. Yeah, they're still number one. Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. isn't it? Uh, you know, it's sad because if you're a guy born in like 1980, you probably, well, you don't have any recollection of mm -hmm. MV Augusta. When I was a kid, MV Augusta won everything. And they had, everybody credits, you know, the Honda 750. And true, it was the first mass produced four cylinder overhead cam. Right. But MV Augusta had all sorts of exotic stuff running in the 50s and the 60s that was just unbelievable. I remember a couple of riders were telling me that, uh, you know, that a couple of racers I know that were driving in the 70s and they'd say the Honda mechanics would come. And, uh, you know, they weren't really crack mechanics, but the parts they put on the bike just always worked. Right. So they literally came in, 15 minutes later, left. Yeah. Whereas the Italian, the, yeah, the, yeah. the English guys had the whole engines apart. Right, right, yeah, yeah. You know, and nothing was running on those bikes at 12,000 RPMs. The Hondas were just... I know. I remember when Honda came to America, the first Honda shop was not far from here and they said they wanted to sell 5,000 bikes. And the owner of the shop said, you can't sell 5,000 bikes a year, that's crazy. And they said, no, a month. <laughs> a month? What are you, out of your mind? But they did. I mean, bro, that, you meet the nicest people on a hunt, remember that campaign? And when you see those ads from the period, I remember one, a guy, a, a father, he's in shorts and flip-flops, <laughs> and his like five-year-old is on the back holding on, no helmets, no, no, no leathers, no, yeah, no, yeah just, it, yeah. It's safe. Yeah, just a different time. But different you know, time. those, I mean, I mean, when I was growing up, the CB400 Sport, Super Sport, with that beautiful blue. I used to blue. dream about that bike because it was a multi-cylinder bike. It was 400 cc's, it was affordable. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing like it. I and mean, pretty. That's right. And when you, uh, when you got an English bike with 400 cc's, it was one big single cylinder, like a 441 right. Victor, Victor, which is like yeah. driving a bass drum. <laughs> going uh, down the this thing was smooth and fast and handled. And yeah, it was, it was a great bike. And starting the 441 Victor is a fun thing. Oh yeah, yeah, you just get down there and care. Yeah. It's great when it kicks back and, <laughs> you know. You have to look at this for maybe a half an hour to see all the little touches, all the little details, every screw. You know, I'm looking at these screws here because he knew if they were flats, I know you wouldn't be happy unless they were all facing exactly. this, no. in the same direction. So using one no. of these, you know. It's, I, I it's, would not have it, been. It's just so funny. As an artist and a designer, it's just certain things, you know. Yeah, we were also working on putting a fairing on it as well as an option. Ah, eh, no, I think it looks better. I mean, to me, when I look at this, it's like opening the back of a watch. I like to see right. all the little detail. I like to see how few spokes there are in the front wheel, but how thick they are, you know, because it would normally be a lot more than that. Same thing with the rear wheel. Obviously, these are stainless steel and a little, eh, maybe a fraction thicker than normal. Yeah, and but, I mean, 
these are really rare to find the to find the wire rim Baranis because that's when they'd switch to the um, magnesium. Right, right. But your bike, the the wire rims are very rare for the Americas. Yeah, and it's a wonderful, wonderful riding bike. You know, I've had it almost 40 years. I still got two payments left, but but it's 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 good. No, it's great. It's also, great. the electric start compared to a lot of the other bikes. None of the right. none of the Cotties are electric no, starts. No, no. Electricity know. in Italy, I don't know. Maybe Marconi got somebody mad, but they just don't seem to. It's the funniest thing with Italian electrics. It is. It's literally spaghetti. You see, it's, oh, okay. You know, and uh, I get a lot of Italian vehicles, and all the wires are the same color. Why is that? How do you trace it? You know. But that's okay. They're so beautiful to look at. I love the way it is black. You didn't try to make it red or blend it in in some way. It almost looks more hidden black for some reason. I don't know why that is. But I like it. It's, it's very purposeful. I know what it's there for it, to do the job it does. Yeah. It's all black with black clips. And it's, boy, it's just great. And that's, is that the standard radiator on the Brutale? No, I think we, we used another radiator okay, because, because we I love the way it's curved. changed it's, the frame. It's, it's not, just, not just flat, yeah. Nicely done. Can we uh, take this thing for a ride? Absolutely. Let's give it a shot.
is so good. I have so many vintage bikes. I would have just sailed through this light in. Whereas this just one finger and boom, you stop. It's like the perfect retro motorcycle. You know, it's got the, the look that you want, but with the modern precision, the modern engineering. I mean, this engine at 800 cc's is so much more powerful than oh. the 750, probably with a third or 40% more horsepower. I mean, I would put some mirrors on it. I was scared to death out there, just crazy. But boy, it runs nice, it stops. Just one, just one little finger on the brake. And of course, everybody at the light was giving me thumbs up and looking at the bike. And uh, it's really the best looking gas tank next, next to my Bruff Superior. In some ways, it's more colorful. It certainly catches the eye with the red, white, and blue theme. Really a nice job, Stuart. It, you know, Stuart, if you didn't know by now, it's a designer by trade, right? Photographer, just all that kind of. Design, architecture, Architect, product. rock on tour, kind of a James Bond type. You get the thing. But uh, no, no, I give him a hard time. You know, a lot of guys come in here with retro Harleys and stuff, and they're just really awkward. Uh, some are dangerous. I've had one, I was riding it, and the brakes just tightened up, and I just stopped. I mean, luckily I wasn't going fast at the time, I was just creeping up to a light. But this is perfect from the get-go. I mean, it's not overflowing, it's not hot, we're in traffic, we're taking it 10, 11, 12 grand. It's perfect. Stuart, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Really, really fun, really I, fun. I really appreciate it. That no, it's a really, it's a nice, uh, it's just nicely done and, and just beautiful, beautiful bike. So congratulations. Here's his website again if you want to get in touch with him. So check it out. Uh, StuartParkCollection.com. There you go. See you next week, you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>